Hey, so uh, in this video, I want to explore sort of a third option um, for the course OPS 445. In this course, we are asking you to have a Linux environment where you can do some Python programming. So the requirements are that it be Linux, that you have Git installed, and that you have Python 3 installed. And in addition to that, there's one strong suggestion, which is that you have VS Code or some particular, some other modern sort of code editor program that you can use. Anything that has a debugger, um, a way of stepping through your code is fine. So VS Code is the one I'm most experienced with and seems to be the easiest to set up. However, if you were gonna do something like PyCharm Community, um, you could use that as well. It has a very excellent uh, debugger and can, you can set breakpoints and everything like that. I've just found that the um, setup for that can be frustrating and a little confusing. But anyway, um, so in the course notes, you'll see that we recommend uh, setting up a virtual machine, uh, something like Fedora Workstation. Fedora is a Linux operating system with a graphical user interface, and you can go and you can install VS Code with it just using repositories. It's pretty easy. However, um, if you are finding that uh, you're using a Windows machine and um, maybe having to deal with VMware and having to deal with like, you know, running virtual machines is taking up too many, you know, resources. Um, it's causing too much of a performance hit on your system. There is a third option which you could try, which is setting up a Windows subsystem for Linux. So modern Windows systems, probably from 8.1 up till 10 and 11, uh, should have a thing, um, the capability of running sort of a stripped down Linux virtual machine. And that's called the Windows subsystem for, um, for Linux, I guess, Windows subsystem for Linux, WSL. Um, anyway, so, so what I've done on my uh, Windows machine is I have gone ahead and uh, running through some steps just to sort of set things up. So apparently what we have to do here is we basically have to have Python installed on the Windows machine. Uh, we're gonna go and download Python from just any Python, from the Python web page and uh, we'll go ahead and run that, just run the installation. Um, we're basically gonna be setting things up for Windows and then installing WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux, which will basically have a stripped down Linux operating system running inside Windows. Um, and then we'll make sure that Python is installed on that one as well. So we kind of have two different systems running in parallel. Um, what you should be seeing on my screen right now is me going and just installing VS Code again for Windows. So I'm going to select the uh, Windows version over here. Uh, we will let the installer finish. This may take a little bit of time. And I'll go ahead and just check in on Python. So you see I'm running Python 3.11 over here. Uh, it really doesn't matter what version of Python you're using as long as it is Python 3 something. Um, from Windows 3, uh, sorry, from Python 3.4, 3.6 to 3.11, they've added some things uh, that we're not really going to get into in this course. Um, so it really shouldn't matter just as long as you're not using Python 2 because that is too old. Okay, so at this point we should have um, the VS Code installer downloaded. We'll go and just sort of accept any of the defaults that come with VS Code. Uh, what those basically mean are, if you f open your file explorer in Windows and you see something like a PY, which is a Python script, um, it should give you the option to open that in VS Code without um, having to open it manually. So we just want to accept that. Once VS Code is finished 
installing. Uh, the one thing that we will do is launch VS Code, uh, and we want to go and explore some of the extensions. So extensions are essentially plugins. They are a way for us to expand the capabilities or just sort of modify how VS Code works. Upon, along the left, you're going to see a bunch of different tabs. The one we're looking for is extensions over here. So we're going to search for Python. And one of the top results should be um, an extension built by Microsoft. Uh, should be very popular. You can see 73 million downloads. So that's the one we want. We'll just do, go ahead and download that. And you might want to go and um, explore some other uh, extensions that are on VS Code just to change how it works. Then I will go to my command prompt over here. And we're just going to make sure that uh, Python is installed on Windows, okay? From command prompt, we will go and type in Python dash dash version. Um, and what we should see back is we have 3.8.6 installed. So that's going to be the default version of Python. I guess I have different versions of Python installed on that machine. Okay, so at this point, we should have VS Code working um, the way we want it to. Let's go ahead and test to make sure that we can uh, create a Python file on it. So we'll go to new file over here. There we go. So we'll select Python file. Um, and I'll just type in the most, the simplest Python script I can think of, which is just sort of like printing hello world. And I'll go ahead and save that. Okay, under, I'll just call this something like test, right? Um, I think it's recommended for this course that you create a uh, directory where you can put all of your uh, lab files and things like that. So notice I'm going to put this in my documents folder and I'll just name it OPS 445. That'll become important when we are going from the Linux subsystem to Windows, just getting that path correct, okay? But from the Windows File Explorer, you should see it under Documents, okay? Now we'll go ahead and try running this. So if you click on Run and Debug, um, we'll give it a moment. And what you should see occur in the in the console that appears at the bottom, you should see the output uh, for our for our script. And you can see at the very end, below where it says hello world, that means that my Python script is working. VS Code now interacts correctly with Python. So we're done with all of that. The next thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to open up the Windows Store. This may be named something different in Windows 11. I don't know. I don't have Windows 11. But essentially, there should be some sort of uh, storefront uh, for Windows installed. We're going to be doing a search for Ubuntu. Uh, the Ubuntu subsystem seems to be the most mature. There also is a Fedora one there, but I didn't try it. It looked, um, it didn't look quite as official. This is built by Canonical, who maintained the Ubuntu distribution. So I'm fairly, I'm confident that this one is what it says it's supposed to be. Um, if you don't see this appear in your store, your Windows system might not be set up for uh, virtualization. That's out of my hands. You should talk to ITS or look into enabling hypervisor or something like that. You might have to go into your BIOS settings. Uh, but any modern Windows system will probably be able to run this as a subsystem. Um, if you're not able to run subsystems, you're probably having a problem running any virtual machine at all on your system. Uh, so as you can see, this is a 500 megabyte download. Um, I'm going to probably skip ahead and let this download complete. Okay. So once that has finished downloading, you can click on open and what it should bring up is it lo looks like a terminal window. Okay, so this is a minimal version of Ubuntu running inside of Windows. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just sort of uh, change the text size here so it's a little bit easier to see on your screen. 
Uh, it should vendor properties there. Um, you could change the font if you really wanted to. Okay, it looks a bit, looks a bit nicer. So a couple things about Ubuntu. Uh, the package manager is called apt. So here I am just making sure that apt works. I did not have to create a uh, password for this that used the Microsoft Windows password that I used to log into Windows. Um, so just be aware of that. And as you can see, we have a package manager. We're able to install packages. Now, I believe when you run this, you can see we've got a lot of, to upgrade, but we're not going to worry about that too much. Um, we're going to just check that Python is installed. Um, the one thing that's a little weird about this is on this version of Ubuntu, the one that is default is Python 2.7, and we don't want that. We want to be running Python 3. That is also installed. This is 3.5.2. So the one thing, if you're going to be testing things on this subsystem, just make sure that you're typing in Python 3 rather than Python. Okay. And you can see also I'm checking here that kit git is installed. It is installed. We didn't have to do any apt install. Okay. So everything's fine. The next thing is how do we share files between Windows and this subsystem? So I am looking at the root folder right now on my subsystem. And when I check under slash MNT mount, you can see that I have a drive C, a drive E, and a drive F. When I go into drive C, I am finding my Windows uh, file system. Okay, so all the things that are installed on the Windows, you can find from the uh, Ubuntu subsystem. So this is a way for you to basically uh, create a file in Windows using VS Code and then be able to test it on Linux with the subsystem. Okay, so the way that it works, uh, slash mount slash C will bring up your C drive. And then since I installed this in, um, since I created the folder in documents, what I can see is I can go to my users folder. Uh, the username I have here is Aton. Um, and then documents. So users, a ton, documents, there it is. And then I should be able to find OPS 445. There we go. Okay, so you can see my test.py file is there. Uh, I can see it from my file explorer under Windows. And then I can also find it using ls on my subsystem. And so the last thing to test is just to make sure that I can run Python scripts under the Linux subsystem. There we go. So that's what I expect to see. Uh, that's what I got from my VS Code window. So at that point, you have a Linux operating system that has both Git installed and Python installed. And you can also use VS Code to step through things. The only thing that's going to be a problem is um, if you are testing something like subprocess under VS Code, that won't work because it's trying to run everything under Windows, and it just uh, it doesn't really it doesn't really translate. Some other caveats here: I have not tested all of the course material on the subsystem. Everything should work for the most part, uh, but if it doesn't. I would recommend that you also set up matrix or something else that you can use uh, for further testing. Anyway, um, I hope that was useful. Again, this is an optional thing that you might want to try. If you don't want to set up a Fedora virtual machine, you could use this as an, as an alternative. Um, take care. I'll see you, see you soon.